Hello students, in this video we'll prove the Poisson summation formula. Let's suppose that F is decaying sufficiently rapidly as X approaches positive and negative infinity and sm sufficiently smooth. Two. Okay. Of course, we can just say that F is a Schwarz class function or something akin to that. Okay. Then, the Poisson summation formula states the following. It says the sum over n and z, F of x plus n, this is called the periodization of a function because this function is one periodic, is going to be equal to its Fourier series, the sum over n and z, f hat of n e to the 2 pi i n x. Where here f hat of n is defined by the following formula, f hat of n is just going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x with e to the minus 2 pi i n x dx. Those are the Fourier coefficients here. So it's relative to relative to 2 pi, okay? If I do this for pi period, two pi periodic functions, I just get extra parameters of, of pi that are factoring into the equation. This is a little bit more clean version of Poisson summation. Okay, great. How do you prove something like this? Well, what you'd like to do is you'd like to compute the Fourier coefficients of this expression over here on the left-hand side, right? So in other words, let's compute, let's call this function over here g of x, right? g of x. And what are the Fourier coefficients of g? So what would g hat of n be? g hat of n would be the integral from 0 to 1 of g of x, e to the minus 2 pi i n x. Easy enough, right? That's the definition of the Fourier coefficient. But now, what is that Fourier coefficient over here? So now I can plug in this representation, so this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum now of, of m and z, I have to change the index, of what? Of f of x plus m, e to the minus 2 pi i n x dx. Great. Now this sum is at by the decay, by the decay infinity and the smoothness of f. I can interchange the limits of integration and summation. So this is the sum over m and z, or excuse me, theorem, integral zero to one of f of x plus m e to the minus two pi i n x dx. And now here we're going to shift. Okay. So how are we going to shift? I'm going to let this be my my y. So y is x plus m. So if I if that will not change. So what's going to happen is we're going to integrate from where to where. So let's think about this. This is going to be the sum over m and z integral. So when x is equal to 0, what does y have to be? When x is equal to 0, y is equal to m. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to m plus 1. Great. I'll have an f of y, f of y. And then an e to the minus 2 pi i n, and then what's x? x is really going to be y minus m dx, uh, now to dy. Great. Now, of course, what do I have over here? So if I look at this 2 pi i n hit with an m, both those things are, two, are integer multiples of 2 pi i, so that is going to turn into a 1, basically, right? So what we have over here is going to be what? So this will simplify. Bring it up here. This is going to be the sum over m and z. Integral from m to m plus 1 of f of y e to the minus 2 pi i and y by, by periodicity. And this is just going to turn into, if I sum over z, this turns into all of r, right? All of r f of y e to the minus 2 pi i and why, and that's exactly just by the Foy, definition of the Foy transform f hat of n. In other words, the Foy coefficients of g are exactly the Foy coefficients of m from the Foy transform, right? So in other words, that tells me that g has to have the same, the, the two Foy coefficients are coincide, the functions have to be equal, so that proves Poisson summation, okay? Great, excellent. So here's the, one of the quintessential examples of Poisson sum, summation formula. So we know that the Poisson kernel, we know that e to the minus two pi xc y will transform to 1 over pi y over x squared plus y squared, right? So of course, one sort of classic example of doing this is say when we plug in 
when we plug in the function, when I plug in x equals zero to this function, this formula over here that says that f hat of n summed over z has to be equal to what? Has to be equal to the, the sum of the FOIA coefficients. Okay, excellent. And so if we replace y with n, what can we conclude from this? So by Poisson summation, so of course, one of the classic examples of this is just when we plug in the sum over n and z of f of n is the sum over n and z of f hat of n. That's one famous version of Poisson summation. So if I apply Poisson summation to this, what can we conclude? We can conclude that 1 over pi, the sum over n and z, I'll just say t over t squared plus n squared. In other words, that my y is my t and the n's my x over here is equal to what? Is equal to the sum over n and z of the exponential of e to the minus 2 pi, 2 pi t modulus of n. So that's a, that's a quintessential example of Poisson summation. We get this functional value over here. Now one really cool thing we can do with this is we can actually pull out the first term over here when, t, when, t, when n is equal to 0, we just get 1 over t. So the first term, I can symmetrize this and say that this is equal to what? This is equal to a t over pi plus 2, the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of t. And now what I'll do is I'll write this as t over n over 1 plus t over n squared times 1 over n. Okay? So that will, that's just a, a silly way of writing it. And so now, of course, what can we say? We can, use the, we can use the representation formula for the geometric representation formula. We know that x over 1 plus x squared is really x times the sum m goes from 0 to infinity of x to the power 2m times negative 1 to the m, right? So we can do is we can, so using this representation over here, I can say that this is equal to t over pi plus, I missed, I missed a pi over there, over pi, plus 2 over pi, and then the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of what? Of 1 over n, and then the sum m goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the m plus 1, and then we're going to have a what? And then we're going to have a um, x, so that's going to be a t over n, t over n to the what? Over here it's going to be a 2m minus 1, so 2n minus 1, 2 to the m minus 1 over here. And so if we look at this, what, what do we see over here? If I change the order of summation, what does it become? If I change the order of summation, this becomes t over pi plus 2 over pi, 2 over pi, the sum m goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the m plus 1. Then I have a, I'm summing over n, n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, and then n to the 2m minus 1, that turns into, a, the total factor of n is n to the negative 2m. When I sum, n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the negative 2m, this is really just the Riemann zeta function at 2m. So this is going to be the Riemann zeta function at 2m, t to the power 2m, t to the power 2m minus 1. So this gives me a representation formula for, for, a, t for a power series in terms of this, uh, this exponential function over here in terms of the Riemann zeta function at the even integers. And so we can use this formula together with the cotangent representation formula to find explicit values of Riemann zeta function at 2m in terms of the Bernoulli numbers. Thank you very much.